slowly swimming through the freezing waters of the North Atlantic around Canada and Northern Europe. Greenland sharks are peculiar cigar or sausage-shaped animals that live their lives largely in the dark, not just because of their environments, but also from copepods, small crustaceans that attach to their eyes and make them blind. Not that it matters too much to the sharks, given that they can still get around well through both their smell and hearing. This slow and methodical lifestyle, where they mostly scavenge in the cold environments they inhabit, has led them to have a very slow growth rate, along with gestation periods. Growing at a rate of about 0.5 to 1 cm a year, and in some cases, having a pregnancy of about 10 pups, lasting a good 18 years, it was evident for a good while that these animals were quite long-lived, though the extent was for a long while quite hard to pin down. It's been hard to do for a variety of reasons, one of them being that the waters in where they live are often hard to access, having low levels of travel through them, and given the depths at which they live, gaining information on them is often very difficult. The information we do often glean from them often only comes up from individuals that turn up as bycatch in trawl nets or long lines. There is also something about their biology that makes it hard to determine anything concrete, since being cartilaginous fish, they lack otolus, the bones of the inner ear in bony fish which grow like rings, allowing for their age to be accurately determined by counting them. Because of this, and lacking the solid bones to easily mark their age, it was only till very recently that we could understand more on the specifics of their longevity. Instead, scientists turned to another potential technique, one used by three Danish scientists, Jan Heinemeyer, John Stephenson, and Julius Nielsen, who in 2008 published a paper on lens crystallines, a group of proteins which are found in the human eye. For some background, like all other organic molecules, these crystallines contain carbon, which includes trace amounts of the radioactive isotope carbon-14. Unlike other proteins, which undergo constant recycling and replenishment, these crystallines, on the other hand, remain stable throughout a person's life, with them being present since birth and being a prenatal artifact present before both our and other animals' births. Utilising bycatch from fishermen, a team of scientists managed to obtain samples from 28 sharks, ranging from 81 centimetres to just over 5 metres, which were collected during expeditions to Greenland between 2010 and 2013. To make the results more accurate, the study they would later publish in 2016 also utilised something you wouldn't really consider, and that was looking at atomic bombs, or at least their lingering presence in the environment. After the heavy testing of thermonuclear weapons back in the 50s and 60s, there was a huge spike in carbon-14 generated from the use, something known as a bomb pulse, which because of the spike, can be measured in the shark's eyes. The fallout from the bombs used since the 50s nearly doubled the concentration of 14 carbon slash 12 carbon in the Earth's atmosphere, and although temporary, the radioactive 14 carbon isotope didn't disappear, instead moving from the atmosphere and then settling and mixing with other carbon reserves found on land and also in the oceans. With this at hand, the short period of rapid radiocarbon increase became evidence as something that could be analysed in establishing a timestamp for that age validation, with the radiocarbon from the bombs being incorporated into the tissues of all living things born after the bomb pulse, which then acts as a biomarker for age, given the tissues of the animals born beforehand look very different. After calibrating the data, the team estimated an incredibly high average age for one individual as about 392 years, give or take 120, so it could well have been over 512, meaning this older individual could well have been born anywhere from 1618 to as early as 1498. So at least from this older estimate, this particular animal was swimming around well before the Declaration of Independence in the United States, being older than the whole nation states, as well as being alive at the same time as Leonardo da Vinci, with there being a whole bunch of other fascinating examples to bring up. Alongside this impressive age range, it was also estimated that these animals have reached sexual maturity as around 150, which makes for an exceptionally long period of adolescence. This long and slow life does however make them especially vulnerable to us, given they used to be intensively fished in the past, as their livers were both a big source of vitamin A, and also for lamp oil. Not only that, but during World War II, it was also found that the livers also provided an extremely durable machine lubricant, so they were further hunted in large numbers before a synthetic alternative was found. With how long they can live, it's safe to assume that many of the larger and especially older animals were killed off during this point, some of which were potentially alive in the 1420s, and therefore led to their populations likely not completely rebounding since then. Today, the population has been mostly found to consist of subadults, meaning many of them have decades to up to a century to go in order to mature and breeze, making them vulnerable. Considering they're an arctic species, anthropogenic climate change is especially a very big threat to them considering the fragility of their environments, with the goods number still either being caught today either for foods in areas like Iceland or as bycatch from time to time.
Given that the mechanisms that build up their metabolism remain largely unknown and under studies, this means it's all the more important to learn more about them, and how the changes they will certainly face in the coming years and decades will impact them. All in all, I thank you for watching this video on these animals, and that you may have learned something new. If you would like to see more from this channel, be sure to subscribe if you haven't already, and with that, I'll see you for the next instalments of this year's Shark Week.